trust our enemy. Well, Never trust thine enemy. That's right. We don't never trust our enemies. And we know that these people that run this government, this wicked government, and run this wicked earth are our enemies. And we don't trust them. Right? And there's very good reason not to trust them. Look at their history. Look at the way that they've been treating our people. Look at the way that they've been poisoning us. Look at the way that they've been misleading us and miseducating us. Right? And their system. Got our brothers and sisters that's out here blind and lost. Not blind like me. But blind physically. Right? They don't have no spiritual discernment at all. Right? To understand the game that these people is playing on them. Finish that out, King. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. That's right. No matter how much they smile in your face, no matter how much they want to shake your hand and play buddy buddy with you, you know what I'm saying? Come around and talk about the latest hip hop record so they can seem like they cool with you. They're the goddamn devil. And they, their evil and their wickedness is going to show itself no matter what. You just better hope that you be on point when it does. You better be on point to know that it's coming. Because if you don't, don't think that they will not blindside you. No pun intended. Let me get Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 47. This is why we can't trust these enemies, King. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47, and it reads, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. A lot of times when that scripture comes out, that's one of the parts of the scriptures that a lot of people look over. To serve the Most High with joyfulness, right? Because you're going to cross some people, they'll be like, you know what? I, 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 I agree with the scriptures, but I don't like them. You know, you can't get into the kingdom with that spirit. You know what I'm saying? You can't get into the to the kingdom saying, uh, I'm going to keep the commandments, but I don't like them. Right. No, you got to love to do this thing. That's right. You got to want to wrap yourself up in these commandments and faith in Yahweh Shai every day, all day, 24-7, period. Right. And right. you got to do it with gladfulness. You got to do it with happiness, cheerfulness. Huh. That's right. right? That's the way you got to do it. Wait. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, your friend, thy enemies, your cousin, thy enemies, the person you met, thy enemies, your enemies. How do you going to serve them, King? Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. So your enemies are going to, you're going to serve your enemies in one of all things, right. starting with hunger, right. hunger, right? How many of you, right now, let me get an old year if you know what? Well, if you know what um, meat, meat glue is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? So we know when we go in these supermarkets that Esau be controlling, and we think we're getting us a nice piece of lamb, right? Like, yeah, I'm about to bust this lamb down like a hostage. Yeah. Right? But no, you, you think it's a big piece of boneless lamb, but what it really is is some boneless ham mixed up with some lamb. See, these are the type of games that they play with us because they know that as long as they can keep us in sin, knowingly or unknowingly, yeah. right? Never trust in thine enemy, right. right? But it's not just that. They put baby fetuses in the food, right. right? I mean, look at me. I'm standing here today. I changed my diet up. I stopped eating the poison, right? I'm still struggling with it. It ain't an easy feed. I've been eating poison for 54 years, right? But um, it works. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it works. And they say that the stomach is the beginning of your health. Right? So we know that Esau playing games. They put stuff in our food. They put stuff in our water. I didn't even know. I thought water was just water. But you can't trust your enemy. Right? So you got to get the right water that's right for you. Because they, they putting things from the vaccine in the water. In your Polish brain. You know what I'm saying? Read that out. In hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Right, because these are your enemies that we gotta go to, and they continuously poison us. Poison us physically, poison us mentally, and poison you spiritually. Right? To stop you from being able to even get in a situation where you can deal with the most high. Because what they do, they tell you that the laws have done away with. Right? They don't want you to keep these commandments. They don't want you to have no wisdom. Right? But let me get through, let me get let me get on uh, Proverbs 28 and 9. And you over here, my brother, because I've been neglecting you, King. Let me get um 
joint, let me get say joint 931. See, like they trying to play these evil tricks on us. They don't want us to keep the commandments. They don't want us to keep the law. They don't even want you to hear, hear us bring out the law. That's why they got these punk ass police over here watching us. Because if we tell too much truth, you know what I'm saying? They can do something. Like the sister want to come over here and throw ice, right? And brothers is like, you know, we stand around. Like, why this sister wilding like that? Them crackers over there probably sent that sister over here. Right? Because if we would have threw ice at her, I guarantee you they would have been over here trying to play punch on us. Teach us. okay then, and said, upset, disrespect, rob, steal, kill the men of the Lord, though. Right? Read. Yep. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. See that? This is the trick that they playing on our people. This is the trick that um, T.D. Jakes is playing on our people. This is the trick that Juanita Bynum is playing on our people. This is the trick that Joel Elstein is playing on our people. This is the tricks that Joel, uh, um, Eddie Lane and all of them is playing on our people. Telling our people that the law is done away with. But then you turn around and you go through the curses and the trials and tribulations in our community with our people and you turn and you pray with all your might to the most high. Please God, please take these curses off of me. Please God, help me pay these bills. Please God, help me feed these children. Please God, let me be safe today. Most high ain't hearing none of that. What makes you think he gonna listen to you when you don't wanna listen to him? You understand? And I know you good old tongue-speaking Christians would be like, oh, that's the Old Testament. The Old Testament is done the way with. Well, let me show you something in the New Testament. Wait. It's the book of John, chapter 9, and verse 31. Now we know that God, he is not sinners. Uh-oh. He said he don't hear sinners. A Christian will tell you in a minute, I'm a sinner. They proud of that. They are proud sinners. I stay here today to tell you, you know what I'm saying? If I do sin, it won't be willfully, right? Because I get up in the morning with my mind and my blind is on. I'm going to walk in his ways and do his will, period. Because that's the way it's supposed to be. And if I can do it, you ain't got no damn excuses, right? Because I walk by faith, not by sight, literally. So if I'm doing it literally, you shouldn't have a problem doing spiritually. You understand? Finish that up. Now we know that God hears not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. You see that? So when you do his will and you walk in his ways, he's going to hear your prayers. These brothers and sisters that's out here rocking these beautiful green, rocking these fringes and these borders of blue, he's going to hear our prayers. Right? When we turn to him and we ask him to redeem us, and we ask him to deliver us out of this captivity and get us away from these damn crackers, he's going to deliver us. He's going to deliver us from these heathen nations. And then you know what he's going to do? He's going to destroy them. Give me Isaiah 66 and 15. He's going to destroy them. You hear these noise right now? They got their fancy firecrackers. You hear that? Fancy firecrackers. But guess what, damn it? It's gonna be some crackers on fire. That's right. It's gonna be some crackers on fire. You know what I'm saying? Let me get that. This is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots. He's gonna come with what? With fire, fire and with his chariots. With water. With fire and with his chariots. With hell. With fire and with his chariots. Cotton candy and lollipop. With fire and with the chariots. He's coming with fire to burn you all up. That's right, man. Prophecy is going to come to pass. Right? So you need to get yourselves ready. And for my brothers and sisters, we got to understand who we are in this thing. Because if you don't know who the chess pieces are on the chessboard, you can't play the game. Right? So you need to know who you are. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6, and you can be on um, Revelation 21 and 12, and we're going to finish it out with that. Because we're going to let us know who we are. Matter of fact, give me that 21 and 12 first. The kingdom of heaven is ours. That's right. Salvation is ours. Right. We're going to rule over these nations. Right. We're going to put our feet on their necks, right. and we're going to break them. 
until they keep these little statutes and commandments. If they don't, there's going to be death and destruction for them. You understand? And I got, I got plans for my plantation. You know what I'm saying? I got that good music for my crackers to listen to when they go out there and work them fields. You know what I'm saying? We gonna get all the good music. Listen while you work. You know what I'm saying? You gonna get to go out there, you know what I'm saying? We're not gonna play you. All of that. Me. Revelations, chapter 21 and verse 12. And had a wall, great and high. And had 12 gates. No, one gate. And had 12 gates. 12 gates. They're supposed to be lying to you. It's not one gate to get into the kingdom of heaven. It's 12 gates. Read on. And at the gates, 12 angels. And names ran thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So that means it ain't no gates for the Moabites. It ain't no gates for the Ishmaelites. It ain't no gates for the Ammonites. It ain't no gates for nobody else but the 12 tribes of Israel. And the only way you other nations is gonna get in the kingdom is washing my business in my drawers. Period. Bottom line. And you know what? That's the, that's the blessing that we're going to get because the Most High has not turned his back on us. The Most High loves you. One last scripture before I get to the last scripture. Give me uh, Romans 11 and 1. Read. It's the book of Romans. Chapter 11 and verse 1. I say that if God cast away his people, God forbid. Let me everybody say that. God ain't cast us away. You know why God ain't cast us away? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. This is the mighty book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Hold up. I want to hear that one last time. We don't heard that scripture so many times. Everybody in this should hear that scripture by heart. I want to hear everybody say it again for the time, man. Thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are 